Peace, BIO family. I'm your host, Shabari Lamb, and this is another edition of BAIO News. And in this video, it's going to be more of a commentary. It's going to be talking about Liberia and Black internationalism. Now, I found this in an article um, by Africa is a Country. It's a great website. They do a great job on critiquing African issues, understanding the root causes of issues that are pervading the continent, and also, you know, just overall African history. So if I were you, I would definitely check out Africa is a Country if you want some great analysis from great perspectives. Um, it's called The Decline of Liberia and Black Internationalism. It's written by Brooks Marmon. Now, Brooks Marmon is somebody who works at the University of Pretoria. Of course, that's in Pretoria, South Africa. And he does a great job in sort of reanalyzing Liberia and understanding the importance of Liberia in the context of Pan-Africanism, Pan-African thought, and African liberation. It says the following, historically Liberia ignited the imagination of black people across the globe, then it stopped. What happened and can it be reversed? So we're going to be going in depth in this article and giving uh, the analysis, my analysis of what I think Liberia can do to, you know, get its image back and recapture the black imagination. So it begins talking about Ghana's year of return. In 2019, the government of Ghana ran a successful campaign, the year of return, marketing the country as a beacon uh, for the African diaspora, drawing the commemoration, uh, marking the 400th anniversary of the introduction of slavery in the English colony of Virginia. The initiative primarily targeted black Americans and attracted high, pro high profile visitors like Cardi B, Steve Harvey, and Ilhan Omar. Next year marks the bicentennial of Black American settlement under white American direction in Liberia, Ghana's regional neighbor. The Americo, a Liberian settler group, ruled over the country following its 1847 independence from white-dominated American colonization society, only losing power after a military coup in 1980. Even without a drastic curtailing, of global travel as a result of the coronavirus pandemic, the prospect of similar pilgrimage of significant commemoration of Liberia, unique heritage seems unlikely. And that is unfortunate uh, considering the connection between Black Americans and Liberia and Liberia being founded by African Americans and Afro-Caribbeans as well uh, with the help of the American Colonization Society. The country's once prominent in the West African, in the West stern pan-African worldview now infrequently figures in such discussions. A recent conversation on Black internationalism in the American Historical Review, the official publication of the American Historical Association, did not feature a single reference to Liberia in the body of discussion. The uneasy product of collaboration between white Southern slaveholders and Northern abolitionists, Liberia lacks the revolutionary pedigree of a nation like Haiti, or the, uh, or the heritage of armed struggle, uh, resistance, excuse me, of Ethiopia's struggle against European imperialism. A search of posts on Black Perspectives, the blog of the history of African-American intellectual history society with Liberia in the title returns zero results, Haiti garners 10. So, you know, oftentimes Liberia is seen as a result of white slaveholders, uh, white abolitionists, and, you know, Christian clergy. And I would just like to, you know, clarify some of that in saying that that's not necessarily the case. It was founded by Robert Finley, of the, who founded the American Colonization Society, but he contacted a man by, a man by the name of Paul Cuffey, who was the richest black man uh, at the time. He also sent 38 African Americans to Sierra Leone. Uh, James Ford was a supporter of Back to Africa movement. Although uh, he opposed the American Colonization Society, he secretly supported uh, African Americans returning back to Africa. We can go all the way back to Prince Hall. So this is not was not just a product of white slaveholders abolitionists and Christian clergymen. This was a culmination of classical black nationalism that started back in the American Revolution as early as the 1780s. Um, but let's continue on. Historically, Liberia ignited the imagination of black people across the globe. Uh, for over a century, it was one of the, uh, one of the few countries in an imperialist world um, where black people governed themselves. 
Although Liberia's colonization was controversially implemented under white American direction in 1822, by the second half of the century, prominent black American theologians like Henry McNeil Turner and Alexander Kamel were promoting black immigration to the only independent, internationally recognized independent nation in West Africa. Black America's enthusiasm for Liberia accelerated in the aftermath of World War I as a famed Black American intellectual W.E. Du Bois wrote in the 1930s, the success of Liberia as a Negro Republic would be a blow to the whole colonial slave labor system. Both Du Bois and Marcus Garvey, two of the most prominent uh, American Pan-Africanists, Garvey was an uh, immigrant from Jamaica, were bullish on Liberia in the 1920s. And then it's gonna talk about, you know, uh, you know, as other African countries gained independence in the late 1950s, early 1960s, especially 1960, 1960 being the year of Africa, Liberia's, you know, view in Pan-Africanism declines. And he talks about Liberia's Pan-African stature rapidly diminished in the 1960s as celebrated visionary leaders like Julius Nyerere and Kwame Nkrumah assumed state power in Africa. Leslie Alexander Lacey, a one-time Black American expatriate in Ghana, uh, embodied Black American system, uh, disappointment with Liberia at this at its time, uh, writing politically thinking Blacks are critical of Liberia's president, William B.S. Tubman, uh, who was president since 1944, his dependency on Firestone and Goodyear rubber plantations, and his inability to move towards a more pan-African direction. And of course, it later brings up the fact that the 1982 and, you know, the subsequent there's two civil wars, the first Liberian civil war and the second Liberian civil war. And lastly, the Ebola crisis all but decimated Liberia's image. And if you go look online, you constantly see when, when uh, you, you type in Liberian documentary, nothing but negatives, nothing but bad image of Liberia, cannibalism, warlords, civil war. Uh, it's really decimated the image of Liberia. Um, you know, but it also talks about, you know, William V.S. Tubman's anti-colonial policies really rebutting, you know, Leslie Alexander Lacey's claim. And he says, um, President Tubman hosted a 1959 summit with Nkrumah and Sukur Ture of Guinea, which laid the groundwork for the formation of the Organization of African Unity. Um, a Liberian official played a prominent role in creating the African Development Bank, uh, Southern African Freedom Fighters. Uh, like Nelson Mandela visited Liberia and received support from Tubman while other exiles taught uh, at the University of Liberia. Tubman even maintained a long-term relationship with Marcus Garvey's first wife, uh, Jama the Jamaican-born Amy Ashwood Garvey, and his successor, William Tolbert, um, deepened his Pan-African engagement, broken his ties with Israel, and, the president, and was the president of the African Organization of African Unity. Um, this was at the time of the 1982. So it talks about, you know, other Pan-African icons. So he brings up one of the few immigrants in Liberia in the 19th century to assume prominence in modern discussion of Pan-Africanism was, you know, Edward Wilmot Blight. He's considered one of the major fathers uh, of Pan-Africanism. And um, it talks about Liberia's revolutionary spirit. You know, people such as, you know, Joseph Jenkins Roberts, you know, Hillary T, John Brown Russell, all of these people played a major role in early Pan-Africanism. Although they might have done it through a classical Black nationalist lens, you know, and Wilson Jeremiah Moses talks about classical Black nationalism, they were still, you know, black nationalists. And I think that they need to be, you know, given that same respect as, you know, the Garveys of the world, uh, the George Padmers of the world, um, Kwame Nkrumah, uh, Nasser of Egypt. You know, these, these Liberian founders were believed in black independence. And there has been some critique, especially a book that's titled Un-African American, you know, talks about, you know, how they quote unquote supported you know uh anglo-american values and european imperialism but in reality many of these people if you read their writings were against european imperialism you know just because they may have had a western viewpoint it doesn't mean necessarily they were anti-african or didn't believe that africans deserved to have been respected on on the global stage and so he encourages at the end you know to give a whole 
holistic perspective on Liberia. And, and once again, you can read this article um, on Africa is a country. And, you know, he does a really great job and more black Americans need to talk about Liberia. Um, more black Americans need to appreciate Liberia, what Liberia has done. I'm proud of Liberia. Um, I consider it my country. It is our country. We have a right to claim it. And as you know, Liberia 2022 approaches, you know, let's show out. Let's show the world where Liberia belongs. Let's get rid of that image of, you know, the warlords and all that. Let, let's show what African Americans and Liberians are about. So let me know what you guys think about this article. Let me know what you guys think about it. Um, it you know, do these Pan-Africanists need to be ingratiated, you know, be ingrained in our psyche? that these are the top two people like, you know, John Brown Westworm, Joseph Jenkins Roberts, Hillary T, you know, they need to be, do they need to be, you know, reverg regurgitated over and over again so every black American knows who they are? Do you think that, hey, you know, it was a product of the time, you know, not many people know about them, but let's, you know, focus on the big people like Garvey so that, you know, it can garner more attention. Let me know what you guys think and I'll see you in the next video.